Hey everybody and welcome back to Astralagaster where we meet Lancelot Moore and apparently men of his class are destined to rule even though he is doubtless a fool. So we'll check in on him but first let me go ahead and, and apologize in advance in case it happens. There's some construction going on like right outside uh, my room here so you may hear some some banging or any kind of maybe like a circular saw or something but just hopefully it's not too bad and hopefully you can you can uh, just roll with the punches and let's get through it so let's check on Mr. Lancelot Moore here see what was up with him so let's remind ourselves so he wanted to marry his cousin Barbara and we said just just hold on for a while and she'll uh, she'll uh, break the marriage off or he did not want did I say he wanted to marry he did not want to marry his cousin Barbara I don't remember what I said um, but then he wanted to marry this other woman and we said hey just be a rich guy and that didn't work out so he actually broke off another engagement and we told him to leave England for a while and that's why we skipped uh, number four because he wasn't in the country so case history number five he wanted to marry this uh, this widow but we deduced that uh, she was Emma Sharp or I think she's called Emma Dyer now she's the one that's been killing off her husbands and we said no don't do that and let's see what happens let's see what the result of that is good even mr. Moore how may I do you service I have a mind uh, to take up a profession and would have your counsel on it. For okay. I must say, your advice thus far has been most excellent. Well, thank you. Counseling me not to marry that sly succubus Emma Dyer did veritably save my life. I'm sure it did. Indeed. I have heard it rumoured that her husbands have a lamentable habit of dying, if you follow Indeed. my meaning. Indeed they do. In short, their deaths are most unnatural and not at all accidental. Do you understand what I'm telling you, Foreman? I understand. Aye, I do, Mr. Moore. Pray afford me a moment to recover from the excess of shock and surprise I do feel upon being told of the lady's true nature. Now, you say you wish <laughs> yeah, to take up a was profession. Not a surprise. It is a military career you're considering, I presume? You wish to distinguish yourself in battle? Nay, it is a career in the church. Verily so. I have a mind to take holy orders. You wish to become a clergyman? I tell. How came you by this notion? T'was given me by the top dog himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Oh, He's a hunting okay. chum of my father's. I, the Archbishop, is a crack shot with a musket. You should see him at it, Foreman. Give the man half an hour and a pouch of lead shot and he'll turn your duck pond into duck soup. It seems the Archbishop has had his eye on me for quite some time. Oh, well, I'm sure he Indeed. has. I'm he sure says I he show has. great promise, and that under his personal tutelage, I should rise very rapidly. Something he even yours said he has rise, a mind perhaps. to make me Bishop of Salisbury. Ah, yes, the much-coveted Bishopric of Salisbury. But before I make my final decision, Foreman, I thought I'd better come to you first. Aye, very wise of you. Then let us see what the stars foretell. Would my querent? Lancelot more enjoy success as a clergyman. I mean, I think you love the ladies a little too much, sire. Though I believe in the Church of England you can still be married, um, obviously because some of these bishops have wives, but I believe the Archbishop of Canterbury has some other intentions for you. Vile hidden motives are at work, promises will be broken. Moore's ambitions are misguided. He is being unrealistic about his suitability for the church. Serving under the archbishop would be unpleasant. And I believe that to be true. I believe the archbishop... Because we saw him... Uh, how he reacted to our manservant. And we've... We've kind of seen some indication, I believe, that... Uh, that he perhaps might fancy Lancelot more if given the opportunity good angels would transform more turning him away from his present course of idleness and dissipation 
London will resound with flattering gossip of Moore's piety and seriousness, thus enhancing his romantic appeal. Or God will help Moore will, with women. I mean, I don't think God would help Moore with women. I think um, God's place would help perhaps with one particular woman, because I believe that's in the Bible that you... <laughs> I mean, I don't believe it's in the Bible. I know that's in the Bible that, you know, monogamy. So I don't think... God would help you with women. God would help you with a woman. So, I'm going to go with A, and hopefully this is a good response. May I discuss frankly, sir, as someone who has guided you these many years past? Uh, yay, I suppose so. Have you uh, considered that your particular tastes and proclivities might be ill-suited to a life that, that, of service that's a good way to put it, church. Simon. My tastes and proclivities? <laughs> if you only knew of the tastes and proclivities indulged at the Archbishop's Palace in Lambeth, I would tell you what they are, Foreman. But what occurs at Lambeth Palace by at Lambeth Palace. Yes, I am well aware. Uh, but as for his offering you the Bishopric of Salisbury, well, the stars do indicate that his Grace has promised the Bishopric of Salisbury to every dean from here to the Isle of Man. I mean, that's kind of true. He is unlikely to ever grant it to you. Verily, he has. How very wrong of the Archbishop to make promises he does not keep. You were very right to warn me of this, for I do not think I could bide the company of such a man for long. I know you could not. I thank you, Foreman. You have served me well this day. I am glad to have done so. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Moore. Can I have that letter of recommendation now? The Quirant did wish to know whether he would find success if he were to pursue a career in the Church of England. I did warn the Quirant against pursuing a career in the Church. Methinks the Quirant was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. I mean, you don't have to methinks it. He told you that he was pleased. There we are. There's our letter. I wonder, like, I'm zooming in, like, I'm squinting at this screen, uh, and obviously this is all gibberish, but I wonder if the artists that designed this particular image of a letter, did they have something that they were writing? Like, does this mean something, or is this just scribbles? It is just as well. I would have been an... It would have been a shame to hide my figure under those shapeless clergyman's robes. Well, whatever you do, don't go back and tell the Archbishop that I said that about him because I also want him to like me, so, um, please, sir, have some candor. Here comes crafty what does she, what does she ask for now? Daytimes are needless to She now. Well, speaking of Emma Dyer, here she is. So originally Emma Sharp, and she's been murdering off all her husbands. Uh, so how can we help you today, Emma? God give you good day, madam. Good day to you, sir, and well met. And how fares your husband, Oh, I'm sure Lady he died Dyer. of the diabetes. I recall you were worried for his health. Twas the diabetes. Oh, the I know. The disease you judged him as having. Yep, it killed him. He died from wounds that never healed. Oh, I'm sure he did. You mean the wound on his lordship's hand? But I recall you saying it was quite small. Oh yes, that wound was, but he acquired many more. One evening, whilst we were summering at our country estate, the stone railing of our balcony gave way, and he fell into some particularly thorny rose bushes. Verily? How distressing. And he never recovered from the scratches? Nay, twas most tragical and so forth. Well, I am sorry to hear of your husband's passing, but, uh, madam, are you quite well? You do not seem yourself this day, if I may remark on it. Dr. Foreman, I am more myself than you have ever seen me, for during these past years I have been playing a role. Have you now? A role that has served me well, to be sure, but I am grown tired of it. Indeed, I am not proud of my dissembling. I'm not proud of some other things besides. Of killing all those and men? And doubtless you are come to unburden yourself by confessing your 
uh, what those things are. What? Nay, of course not. As I was saying, whilst my dissimulations have afforded me wealth and status, such a life as I have lived has not fulfilled me. For though I have been married many times, and known many men, I have always lacked one important thing. A moral compass? And that <laughs> thing is love. In short, I have found love, Dr. Foreman. It better not be me. And the object of my affection is not one of these privileged popinjays I've met at the royal court. Nay, tis a real man. A man who knows what it is to make his own way in the world. Oh, you... You mean to say... You mean you and I? Verily, upon seeing him play Tamara in Titus Andronicus at the Globe oh. one even, I was... It's Aubrey well, Bell. my heart was took. I see. You are in love with a player then, I take it. Aye. And I wish to marry him. But first, I would know whether such a match be advisable. Is our love true? Or is my considerable coin and property where his true affections lie? Such a deception would not surprise me in truth. Well, nay, doubtless it would not. Let us see whether the stars can tell us. Now, um, does this murder off Humphrey Bell? Like, have we seen the last of Humphrey Bell? Yes, so, um, doesn't matter if you kill Humphrey Bell. Should I marry the young player who has won my heart? Um, I dare say that I do not want to... Even if it's not Humphrey Bell, if it's just someone. I don't want to... To insult that person or to make Emma think badly of him. Because she may just kill him for that fact. So I may want to talk... Like, I'm in a... I'm in a crossroads. Either, either I tell her that, oh yes, you're a good match, and that could persuade her to get in a relationship with him and then kill him. If I tell tell them, or tell her that, oh no, he just wants you for your money, that could anger her, and she could just kill him. So there's, there's murder that could happen either way. Emma's bow hides evil intentions. Emma's head has been turned. She is deluded in her hopes. The mind of Emma's beloved is on the coin he would inherit inherit when Emma dies. Now, we do know that uh, Humphrey Bell does need money. Like, he's going to run out of, of, uh, of parts to play if he cannot get male roles because they're going to stop giving him female roles because he's now 25 years old. So he could be after some money. If Emma and I were romantic partners, I would not trust her. Well, that's true. Emma's duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. Okay. Emma's relationship with her young man has changed her. A marriage between Emma and her beau would be faithful and enduring. You know what? I'm going to go with that option just to see what happens, because maybe she has changed. Maybe she has, but like I said, either way, no matter what I say, could end up in the murder of whoever, un whatever unfortunate uh, bow she has. So let's, let's give her this one. That would make her happy, and maybe she would give me a letter of recommendation. The stars bless the match between you and the young man. They do not think it would be bad for him in some way. They do not judge. The chart indicates that your relationship with this young man has changed you. It would be a faithful, lasting marriage. Verily? I must own I dared not expect such a happy ending to my story. I thank ye heartily, Dr. Foreman. Oh, well, that was quite a bland ending, really. Um, but thank you, Miss Emma Dyer. The querent did wish to know whether she should marry the young player she's in love with. I did advise the querent to marry her young beau. Methinks the querent is most pleased with me for the reading I gave this day, and I am very sorry, Humphrey, if, uh, if something bad happens to you. I shall this even to the playhouse go and ask my Humphrey to ask me to marry him. You're going to ask him to ask you to marry him. What an odd statement. What an odd statement, but... I'm crossing my fingers for you, Humphrey. Humphrey Bell, our thoughts we must disclose. Though your acting is fine, you were to many clothes. Tis hot, tis hot, we rise, we rise, not a spot, it's 
Can you please stop uh, stop trying to put Mr. Humphrey Bell in, you know, particular odd compromising situations? Um, pretty please. So I was wrong when I said we've seen the last of Humphrey Bell. Uh, we got his, obviously it seems we've got his letter, letter of recommendation, but it was before the final. Because, uh, can I check back? Yes, so we must have got it to number five when he was going to come back for this time. Um, how's it doing, Humphrey? Good day, Mr. Bell. I see here in my notes the last time you came to us for counsel regarding Mistress Burbage and her tender advances. Aye, and the advice you gave me to cool her down and network to her tree. Oh, Since it? I've been putting them herbs in her potage, she spends so much time in the privy, hardly ever see her oh, now. She's that just is... pooping her guts out. Well... I am glad my advice achieved the desired outcome, and Mistress Burbage is no longer bothering you. Tis about another lady I'm come this day. Tis a member of the audience who comes to all my performances and brings me flowers and sweetmeats. A mature lady. A widow, isn't it? I know her. Another one? Yes, Emma. Uh, on my word, you are most ill-fortuned, Mr. Bell. Verily, are no young players safe these days from being preyed upon by lecherous old ladies? Tis not all ladies, Dr. Foreman. Not this one anyways. Emma ain't like any of the other ladies I've met. In truth, Dr. Foreman, we wish to be wed. I love her, innit? Ah, uh, then what is your trouble? Well, I've heard tell of some vexing things. There are them that say she has a heart of stone and only marries to get her hands on a man's money. Though I have none, and she's very rich. But she has been widowed many times, and there's even a rumour saying she's had her hand in her husband's deaths. Oh, verily? How shocking. How shocking. Aye, I must own to being a trifle shook by it, and maybe a bit excited as well, oh, uh, but, but mainly excited, shook, innit? Huh? Doubtless you are, for it is most frightening if there be any truth to these rumours. We must consult the stars and see whether it be wise for you to marry. Should Humphrey Bell wed this wealthy widow, and what will become of him if he does? You know what? Um, I don't know. Emma seemed like she might have changed. She hasn't, like you said, she has a ton of money. She doesn't need your money. So she would get nothing from you by murdering you. The lady's psychotic instinct regarding the amassing of wealth have changed. Yeah, so we think that her psychosis has changed. The rumors about the lady are cruel. I don't know if they're cruel. They're true. But maybe she's changed. Humphrey can expect a pleasant inheritance from this lady as she is very rich. In time, and if he keeps faith, Humphrey will have children with this lady. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. The lady has a creative approach to marriage and should and is not to be trusted. A death will occur on the couple's honeymoon. Beneath her gentle exterior, the lady harbors hidden motives. So this one was, she will kill you. C was, she will kill you. B was, you'll get money from her and you'll have children with her. I mean, I don't know. This one is, she has reversed her psychosis and the rumors are cruel. You know what, let's, let's go all in on trusting Emma. Let's go with A. She's a good woman now. We promise, Humphrey Bell, but uh, watch your back anyways, just in case, just in case. Mr. Bell, it has been my privilege to guide you over the years in matters of work and in life. Wisely, I hope, but certainly with the greatest sense of care for your well-being. Indeed, I have come to think of you as a father, I think of a son. Tis a responsibility I have not taken lightly, and in loco parentis, as it were, I feel an obligation to... Sir, begging your pardon, sir, but I'm going to stop you right there, because I need to know, in it. Should I marry Emma or not? Yeah, go for yes. it. I believe you may safely marry this lady, Mr. Bell. The stars suggest the rumours you did hear about her are needlessly cruel. So it is all lies, then? Well, not quite all lies, nay. The stars do also indicate that the lady was formerly most fixated upon the acquisition of money, though it would seem she no longer harbours such pecuniary passions, such as is consistent with her desire to marry a penniless player such as yourself. 
So, they just decided I shall marry my dear, sweet Emma. I'd be honoured if you came to see us wed, Dr. Foreman, if you be not too busy in that. It would the be honour shall be all yes. mine, young Humphrey. Assuming I'm not in jail for practicing medicine without a license. The querent did wish to know whether she he should marry a wealthy widow. I did advise the querent to marry a, mel a wealthy widow, Lady Emma Dyer. He thinks the queer is most pleased with me for the reading I gave today. Methinks I shall retire from the stage once I am wed. Mayhap do some charity work or something. There you go. Turning lemons into lemonade. You know, they didn't want to give you any more, uh, any more parts in the plays. And you just say, I'm, I'm done. I married a wealthy woman and I'll see you guys later. Mary ought to take her youngies to the cock-fighting pits. She prefers a hanging, though she readily admits. Viewed after drinking, turning wine until she's off her heart. Um, you drink turnip wine, ma'am? I'm very surprised by that. You seem such a a pious teetotaler lady. Let's check your history. You're the only one, you're the last person, it seems, assuming we don't have another issue like Humphrey Bell. Um, we would have to get your... We would have to get your, uh, your letter of recommendation to save ourselves. And the last thing that happened was that... Uh, there was an influx of continental immigrants, and we said, no, that's fine, and you did not take it very well. So, uh, how's it going, Miss Mary Payne? Good morrow, Mistress Payne. It has been quite some time since I last saw you. Uh, did you ever hear from the Archbishop? I recall your husband was intending to write to him, expressing your concerns about the continentals. Aye, we did write. But he never replied. Uh, yeah, that sounds Not like that him. I am surprised, mind you, as they do say that Archbishop Whitgift is a very idle man. Is he now? Not to speak of the unsavory goings on mm, within the yes. walls of Lambeth Palace. Very unsavory. They say that in the great dining hall, the Archbishop and his guests do feast and carouse from dusk till dawn. Perhaps. And it is said that in some of the palace rooms, they indulge in fornication and sodomitical sins. Oh, uh, yes, I'm not surprised. Verily, indeed. Then... Doubtless that leaves him very little time to reply to every... Truly, methinks being surrounded by such decadence and corruption of the flesh is likely to have made the Archbishop very hard. Mm, I, yes, very hard. bearing witness to so much vice would make a man very hard indeed. Ah, uh, exactly. Hard, Dr. Foreman? Oh, yes. Insensible to the needs and difficulties of ordinary folks such as you and oh, I. Oh, oh, yes, that's Theoretically, what you mean. I do not wonder that such a hard man gave me no satisfaction. Which is why I am come to you this day, Dr. Foreman. Oh, we're not giving you Something any satisfaction. Something troubled me last night, and I would have you tell me what it might have been. I will if I can, madam. Prithee, describe it to me. Well, at first was the noise of a boat that did awaken me. A boat, I got up out of bed and went to the window to see what was. As you know, on 4th Street, we are right by the banks mm, of the yes, Thames. Yes, of course. In the moonlight, I could just make out a ferry crossing the river, loaded up with large barrels. And you thought it suspicious? Aye, indeed, for the hour was very late and the boat's lamp was not lit. That is I suspicious. did not wake Mr. Payne to ask his opinion, for, in truth, he has told me he wishes to hear no more about the things I see from our window. So, I am come to you, for I can have no rest until I know who those men were and what they were doing. Who knows what foul deeds may be afoot in Lambeth Town? Mayhap the men I saw were Catholic spies, I doubt engaging it. in some manner of nefarious plot against the realm. I doubt then it. Then let us see. What does God have to say regarding this boat you saw crossing the Thames last night? Was it some kind of elaborate Catholic plot, or is there a more likely explanation? I mean, perhaps they were uh, smuggling some turnip wine, madam. A, B, or C? I saw a boat crossing the Thames in the dead of night. Are they Catholic plotters? Mistress Payne is unpleasant and delusional. Well, yes, true. Mistress Payne is unhappy with her children. They are doubtless grown up, and now are they, and now are neglecting her. Um, Mistress Payne wants to change the world. That is the legacy she intends to leave. 
the goods the boat was transporting were questionable provenance. Yeah, I mean, that was probably true. If they had their lights off, they were probably smuggling some goods. The boat's journey was undertaken for evil purposes. The information should be reported to authorities, ideally a friend or acquaintance with some connection to them. The ambitions of disloyal, untamed forces are at play here. Okay, so... No? Um, I believe you just probably saw some... Non-taxed goods being, uh... Being passed, madam. Be not afeard, Mistress Payne, for there is a perfectly innocent explanation for what you saw. The men in the boat were naught but thieves and smugglers. Oh, just thieves and smugglers, Doubtless of course. Doubtless they were transporting contraband French wine or heady spirits. Verily, Dr. Foreman? Verily. If that is what the stars say, then doubtless tis true. Though I know not why English folk go to such trouble to drink that continental wine made with those decadent foreign fruits. Mm, yes. Mr. Payne and I drink naught but good British wine made from wholesome English turnips. Mm, yes. Wholesome. Wholesome English turnips. That's a vegetable I've never actually eaten. A turnip? Maybe I'll get around to it one day having a turnip. Turnip and a parsnip. I've never never had either one of those. The Queen did wish to know whether a boat crossing the Thames in the middle of the night was part of some Catholic plot against the realm. I did tell the Queen that it was smugglers that she saw that night. He thinks the Queen was a little pleased with me. Yeah, we'd have to get like 45 points from her in her next uh, consultation to get that letter recommendation. That's not going to happen. What was the name they called the Continentals in the pamphlet I read? Waffle Face Tulip Huggers, methinks? Such japes. Yes, Waffle Face Tulip Huggers. You know, you, you just just can't uh, trust those waffle faced tulip huggers. Hear ye, hear ye! Oops. Catholic terror plot to blow up Parliament foiled! Gunpowder barrels discovered in cellar! Hear ye! Well, we were entirely wrong. <laughs> there was a Catholic plot. Mary Payne was correct, and we were very wrong. Wow, um. Disturbing reports just in from Westminster that barrels of gunpowder were discovered in a cellar under the Houses of Parliament late last night. Sources indicate that this gunpowder plot was a Catholic conspiracy led by Robert Catsby and assisted by a Continental by the name of Guido Fox or Guido. I uh, did not even consider Guy Fox being part of this. You know, the gunpowder plot um, should never be forgot, etc., etc. Um... Did that happen in this period in the 1600s? Like, it's just completely, I completely uh, skipped my even, you know, possibility, rain, rain, realm of possibilities. Excuse me, of being uh, being about Guy Fox. I was incredibly wrong, Mary Payne. I'm sorry to say. Tis well to jest that Mary Payne is well to sneer and mock. Until her views become the norm, and twill be quite a shock. But for now, let's laugh at her and how her knees laughs. How her knees laughs. Let's not uh, sneer and mock and laugh at her because she was incredibly right and we were very wrong. We're never getting that letter recommendation now. Good day, Mistress Payne. You seem in good cheer. That I am, Dr. Foreman. This day I am taking my niece on a lovely outing to see the cockfighting in Vauxhall. Ah, there is a cockpit in Vauxhall now, is there? Aye, and a very fine one. And I did think we need a nice day out to turn our minds away from that terrible affair mm, of the Catholics yes, plotting yes. to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And my niece does so love the cocks. <coughs> Ma Doubtless, madam. You mm. have a cough? And the gunpowder plot was indeed a terrible business. They say it was the doings of a group of young Catholic nobles from the Midlands, do they not? And that the gunpowder was ferried across the Thames at Lambeth under cover mm, of darkness. Yeah, perhaps it was. Doubtless, it was the very same boat I did tell you about, Dr. Foreman. It was most ill of you to tell me what I saw was merely smugglers transporting foreign wine. <coughs> Aye, mayhap I was in error there. Uh, but this day I am less concerned with the state of the nation and more concerned for your health, madam. 
for I do remark that your eyes are most red and irritated in appearance, and you seem troubled with a hacking cough. For how long have you had these troubles? Only these past few days, and as well as my eyes and my cough, I do also find it a trifle vexing to breathe. Then let us now consult the stars. What ails Mistress Mary Payne? Miss Ma- Mistress Mary Payne. My eyes itch, I cough, and I find it hard to breathe. What ails me? Um, it's the disease that I cannot speak about right now because I would definitely be demonetized. The Queerin is suffering from bloodshot eyes, a condition characterized by red itchy eyes. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but also that doesn't explain the cough. The Queerin's lungs have been harmed by an inhalation of noxious odors. The Queerin is suffering from the Green Sickness, a disease that can provoke short-windedness owing to a buildup of venereal frustration. Uh, yeah, let's not go with that one. We don't want to even talk to Mary Payne about her reproductive system. Yeah, let's let's say you've been... Have you been around a coal fire? Um, have you been smoking? What, what have you been inhaling lady lately madam ah madam your symptoms are occasioned by noxious odors most likely you did lately inhale a large volume of smoke uh, mayhap your chimney requires cleaning indeed it does not dr foreman my cleanliness is unimpeachable i have my maidservant scour the house from top to bottom every day ah then i cannot be sure what has occasioned your hold what is that acrid odor? Methinks it does emanate from your clothing. Madam, have you been taking part in the anti-Catholic pogroms that Lambeth has witnessed these past days? The burning of houses and shops? The lynching of priests from trees upon Lambeth Green? Madam? Mayhap I have, and what of it? You should be congratulating me and my ilk for keeping you safe and for sending a clear message to those Catholics who would plot against our Parliament and blow us up with gunpowder. Madam, these Catholics are our neighbours, our Simon. colleagues, and our friends. I beseech you to consider your actions, madam. Are not Catholics people too, just as we are? If you prick them, uh, do they not bleed? You, you tell Aye, them, Simon. and their flesh does burn the same and all. I fear I do not follow your reasoning, Dr. Foreman. Are they not subject to the same diseases, healed by the same cures as we are? And if not cured, then, alas, taken so soon, so needlessly, I did never have the chance to... Oh, my sweet Avis, can you ever forgive me? It all comes Is something back to the Avis. matter with you, Dr. Foreman? On my honour, you do seem most troubled. Mayhap you should be going to consult with a doctor yourself. God keep you well, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day. Blessed day? No, you murder this woman right now, Foreman. You strangle her right here and now and claim it was self-defense because she attacked you when you found out about her actions burning down uh, houses and shops. The queer did present with a cough, difficulty breathing, and irritation of the eyes. I did diagnose inhalation of noxious odors. Methinks the querent was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. But we're never going to get our letter of recommendation. So, normally I would be ending the episode right now, but... I feel like we're close to the end of the game, honestly, because there's no more querents to, to see. I think we've gone through all of them. And we failed to get any get that final letter of recommendation, so... I'm going to let it play out because I'd hate to end the episode and then the next one only be like 15 minutes long or something. So let's play it out. Maybe if I need to, I will, I'll split it later if it runs really long, but let's, let's go ahead and check. Uh, mayhaps we make a list of which shops and taverns are Catholic owned. Methinks our actions could be a trifle more organized. Don't do it, Miss Mary Payne. Hey, hey. <coughs> Hear ye! London struck by plague! Playhouses closed by order of the king! Hear ye! Um, someone, someone save that man? 
be advised that you if you are experiencing any of the following plague sy symptoms fever abdominal pain lumps in your groin oozing foul pus send word to local authorities and a team of carpenters will be dispatched to your place of residence to board up your house so that you may not roam about infecting others please ensure dead loved ones are ready to be deposited in the plague cart when it passes each evening corpses deposited on the street outside of collection hours will incur a fine of one shilling yeah don't don't just dump those bodies guys So John Whitgift is approaching us, and uh, for once, his song is not about how great John Whitgift is. It's a plea for help. Oh, we do have one more. I mean, this is the last thing from John Whitgift. I thought we were done, but I'm just going to quickly step through. Yeah. So, let's see. God give you good day, Your Grace. How fare you this? Know you whether the plague will reach as far as Lambeth? Have you seen it in the stars? No, so you're scared ah, now. The plague that has begun to spread throughout London. Rest assured, Your Grace, if the plague does indeed reach Lambeth, the people of Lambeth will have me, Dr. Simon Foreman, at their service. I don't know. We're My renowned strong water cure will doubtless be required. I bid you, read the stars for me now. Will or will it not reach Lambeth? Of course, as it pleases, Your Grace. Let us see what the stars have to say. Will the London plague reach beyond the city walls to Lambeth? Uh, probably, because that's what plagues do. Will this new London plague reach as far as Lambeth? The rumors of the plague reaching Lambeth are not credible. The Archbishop has nothing to fear from the plague. He has but to exercise patience and the threat will pass. Death from the plague is God's punishment for our sins. It is the Archbishop's duty to stay in Lambeth and help fight the plague. Lambeth society may be peaceful now, but people can behave unpredictably during a grave health crisis. The Archbishop must embark upon a voyage. So, should he leave? I mean, are we going to quote The Clash? Should he stay or should he go now? Um, I know that's paraphrasing, not a quote, but it's close enough. Um, so, he should leave because there's going to be a riot. It's not going to happen. Or, it's going to happen and you need to be here and you need to help us fight it. I'm going to go this one. The plague is coming, and you must help us, John Whitgift. Stay here, and preach, and pray, and quarantine, and hand out goods to people. You know, social distance, all that stuff. Ah, yes. Uh, the stars are most clear on the matter. Very clear indeed. Then what do they say? Tell me! Uh, well, before I give you my answer, I would have your decision on That's granting right. me that medical license right. we spoke him. of on your previous visits. I am sorry, Your Grace, but I must insist upon it. Uh, I would gladly do so, but I find my hands tied due to various episcopal and That's doctrinal... That's what you always <sighs> say. Uh, as I see you are determined not to let the matter rest, I will speak true. Some years ago, the Queen's physician... Dr. Richard Smith we are familiar with did him. write me a letter on behalf of the College of Physicians. He warned me in the strongest terms against granting you a medical license. 
So you see, I cannot grant you a license without raising the ire of the College of Physicians. But uh, now, now, Dr. Foreman, doubtless you are thinking that a man of my position, one of the most powerful men in England, exactly. should not be so easily yes. put off by such a letter. That's what I was thinking. However, and methinks you know this from your own experience, the College is a terrifying organization that will stop at nothing to get their way. One would be better off to find the Queen herself than the licensed doctors of London. For whilst our Lord God in heaven may be merciful, the College of Physicians is not. I verily, I must own that what you say is very true. But mayhap I will furnish you with a letter of recommendation to the University of Cambridge. I mean, unless you can give me two. They may confer upon you a medical degree, and thereby a medical license. I thank you, Your Grace. Now, prithee, answer my question. Your Grace, I am sorry to inform you that Lambeth will not escape the plague this time. It will reach Lambeth before the week is out. God's mercy! Are you sure of this? Yes. Aye, it seems this plague is God's punishment upon us, though it is not clear in the stars what the punishment is for. Uh, debauchery, mayhap? Insufficient burning of heretics? Uh, it is hard to know. No doubt such questions as these will occupy your thoughts in the coming hours and days, uh, though doubtless your priority lies with preparing your clergy and their congregations for the trials to come. Yes, indeed. I must start preparing the household now if you we must. are to remove to Sussex no. before the plague reaches you us. You may not leave, but Matt, Surely sir. you're not leaving Lambeth, Your Grace. Not in its hour of need. Worry not, Dr. Foreman. I will, of course, have my vicars remain, so they may give last rites to their parishioners. Before you go, Your Grace, I believe you were intending to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, well, indeed, I will reflect on the quality of advice you have given me over the years, and if I judge that you have acted with some skill, then... then I will have my chaplain draft you a letter of recommendation and have it sent to you. Good day, Dr. Foreman. It's always later, later. I can't do it. I'll think on it. You are a terrible man, sir. The querent did wish to know whether the plague, which has lately begun to spread throughout London, will reach as far as Lambeth. I did tell the querent that the plague would indeed reach Lambeth, and that it was his duty to remain and offer spiritual succor to Lambeth residents in their hour of need. Methinks the querent took my advice most ill. But you know what? We already got that letter of recommendation, so I'll deliver a sermon on the lessons we might learn from Noah and the Flood. Um, no, how about you stick around and you hand out supplies like a, a good uh, leader? How about that? Though he is not quite a brother doctor yet, one day a license he will surely get. But if he rises up to well, he's not quite a proper doctor yet. And the construction noise has just happened right outside my window. So hopefully that's not being picked up too, too much uh, by the mic. You cannot board up my house! Tis not a plague house! You are mistaken! I do not have the plague! Let me out of here! Know you not who I am, you fools? I am Simon Foreman, doctor of astrology and physic! Fie upon those ungrateful wretches! Have I not always been there for them when they needed me? Am I not the doctor who risked his life to cure them during the plague of 92? Exactly. When all the other doctors and their high-born friends fled London and left them to die? Exactly. Indeed, mayhap next time I will think again before risking my life in the service of the townsfolk. If this is the way I'm to be repaid! You tell him, Simon. And forsooth, if my deeds are so easily forgotten by the living, what chance is there for my work to be remembered by generations to come? What will the world know of me once I'm gone? Um... We will have your case books, sir. How will I be remembered after I die? This speaks of quiet violence exacted by a genteel woman with hidden motives. I'll be remembered for having given something valuable to a psychopath to hide somewhere, 
Forsooth, how strange. Whatever could that be? A potion comprised of costly ingredients? My name will be mentioned in court during a famous legal battle. It will be a long time before my ingenious contributions are properly recognized by historians. Good angels will ensure the manner of my death serves as a testament to the intelligence, accuracy, and soundness of my methods, methods as an authority in the field of astrological science. My relationship with myself will change when I embark upon a voyage. To wit, my death will occur while traveling. Um, no, I think it'll take a long time for our legacy to be known. Ah, I see. Many years will pass before my work is to be given the recognition it deserves. Men living centuries from now, mayhap even ladies, will study my treatises exactly. and casebooks with yes. great care and write histories about my work. Indeed. <laughs> but hold, does not Mr. Shakespeare tell the lives of great men upon the stage? Perchance playwrights will use the wondrous stage machinery of the future to illuminate my work. Maybe. Mayhap the story of my life will be told by players. For though I may yet lack a medical license, the historical importance of my work is, well, tis undeniable. But if I am to go forth into the world to make any further contributions to the advancement of medical science, I must find a way to pry these wretched boards off my front door. William! William! Fetch me a crowbar! Yes, perhaps even the, uh, perhaps even a digital storybook company, if, since Simon Foreman has no idea what a video game is, in fact he has no idea what a digital anything is, but perhaps one of those, whatever that may be, um, will write about your life and different people will play characters. Perhaps that will happen, Simon. I did wish to know how I would be remembered in years to come. I judge that it would be many years before my historical contributions are properly recognized. Hey, there we go, the end. Long ago in England in 1592, there begins our tale and all of it is true. Through the whole of London, the newborn great spread. Covering folking, weeping sores, and leaving thousands dead. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in misery. But one brave doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. I found the thing because he was too sick to leave his bed. Fallen made a plague to and use it on himself, then left his house for Alright, 
that was the end of that. So, <laughs> I didn't know if there was going to get any extra end scenes, but apparently not. So we did not become a proper licensed doctor, and a lot of our people died in absolute misery, and we were not truthful to some people, but that wasn't our fault. We just didn't know. We tried our best. But that was Astrologaster. A very interesting game. Uh, I didn't know what to think of it when I first started it. I had not high hopes. You know, I had some some preconceived notions about what kind of a, a game this could be, but I was pleasantly surprised. It ended up being much better, much better than I thought. I would like to see some of the other outcomes, but unfortunately I just don't have enough time in my schedule to devote to replaying it. So if you liked it, perhaps run out and uh, go out to Steam and get it. Try it for yourself. Try some other, other branching storylines and see if anything's different. Or check out some other uh, YouTubers or Twitch streamers or whatever you may find. But I would encourage you to buy the game to to uh, support the developers. So thanks very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time.